Welcome to this edition of Today's South. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Today we're going to be discussing dentistry with one of California's leading experts. We'll be covering teeth whitening, smile makeovers, TMJ pain, sealants, preventive care, and much more. You're really going to love this show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome to Today's Health. Today's Health is informative and exciting. Today's Health interviews leading experts in all areas of healthcare, so you become a much more informed consumer. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins, and you're watching Today's Health. I'm very fortunate to have with me today a true expert in the field of dentistry, Dr. Steve Tadbazian. Dr. Tadbazian graduated in 1996 from Loma Linda University, one of the best colleges in the country, and is a board-certified doctor of dental surgery. Dr. Tadbazian has been practicing in Redlands for eight years. He's here today to talk about all aspects of dentistry. Dr. Tadbazian, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. So first of all, why don't you tell us why you decided to set up your practice in the Redlands area? Well, from my first visit uh, to Redlands while I was in dental school in Loma Linda, I fell in love with the com community. Um, uh -huh. The people were very friendly. You could walk around the streets and say hello to everyone You know, in the morning while they're getting their coffee. Right. Um, I really en enjoyed that little quaint you know, surroundings. They have a lot of uh, historic landmarks, a lot of mansions, and I was always uh, fascinated by these you know, uh, old buildings. Right. Um, and you know, uh, I happened to walk into uh, the King House Dental Group, which is the, the practice that I'm in, and okay. uh, it's a 103-year-old um, building. Wow. And uh, I just fell in love uh, with the architecture and um, decided that's where I wanted to practice dentistry. That's great. I know you brought a clip that kind of shows the office. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at that so people can see what this office is like. It's really unique. Go ahead and show the clip. I first started coming here probably four or five years ago. The first when I saw the uh, King House, I just thought it was a quaint little house. And then once I had come in and saw what the office was like and the modernization of it. and It's a very, very casual, home-like place. You come in and it's not your typical your typical dentist office or, or orthodontist office. It's not real serious. It's a laid back environment. Um, there's art for you to look at. Everyone's very friendly. It's just a it's a real cool place. That's great, Doc. That's a really neat office. Very unique. So I'm sure that's one of the reasons why, like you said, that you would go there. It's just a real quaint office. I mean, it's neat to have the upstairs and downstairs. So why don't you tell us first of all why you decided to become a dentist as well? Well, I think. Um when I was a child, uh, I would smile a lot, and everybody you know, nicknamed, nicknamed me Smiley, and uh -huh. uh, I was fascinated with people's smiles and teeth, and uh, one day my uncle um, said, you know, why don't you sit down and plan your future and write me a letter? Uh, and I think I sat down and wrote down when I grew up, I wanted to become a dentist. Uh, okay. I forgot about this letter, I was 11, and 15 years later when I graduated dental school, um, we had a family gathering and he presented this letter and to me and it was a very emotional moment because uh, I realized that I had actually fulfilled my childhood dreams and that's great. Um, now you know, I try to help other people smile as much as I can. That's great. So let's talk about TMJ now doctor. Why don't you tell us what that is and what kinds of pain that can cause? Uh, TMJ stands for the temporomandibular joint. It's basically the uh, hinge axis of the jaw that opens and closes the jaw right. every time we speak or chew or talk. Um, when there is a displacement of either of the uh, joints, uh, there can be uh, serious long-term health effects. Okay. And let me explain by what I mean by that. Sure. Um, a lot of times people relate TNJ to popping or clicking noises when they chew or eat. Um, what this can cause are uh, manifestations such as headaches because there are nerves that are entrapped okay. due to this imbalance. Um, head positioning, posture problems because the neck is having to compensate you know, for this displacement. Right. Um, people can have uh, back pain, um, tension or tooth grinding and clenching right. and it affects their sleep because uh, when they are um, putting pressure on their joints as they're sleeping um, there's um, a lot of tension and lack of oxygen to that area which creates a chronic type of uh, inflammation. Right. So, um, a lot of common problems like headaches or neck pain or back pain or sleeping disorders 
uh, most people don't relate these things to TMJ. Right. Um, and isn't it interesting that something um, uh, in your jaws can, you know, causing these problems that actually can be treated by a dentist? Right. It's so amazing. Thought, it's amazing that you know all those things can be caused just by that. And I think that's a, a real misdiagnosis. A lot of people have these things and suffer and go to a lot of other doctors trying to get this corrected and without even thinking of going to a dentist to see if maybe the TMJ could be causing that. So it's pretty interesting. Now, is there a special test that you have in your office that you can actually do to diagnose whether there is a TMJ problem? Yes, we do, Jeff. It's called joint vibration analysis. Okay. And How does uh, that work? Well, it, it's a very new technology, so uh, it's not uh, widely used uh, yet because of its novelty, but right. uh, we basically listen to the jaw joints. We put some earphones uh, and uh, some magnets and we track the movements of the jaw, and this technology that we have in our office allows us to extremely accurately um, see the pathology or that displacement of that okay. disc while it's happening okay so it's a great advantage now what are some of the ways that you treat that you know once you've diagnosed that it is tmj what are some of the ways that you would actually handle that in your office well, there's always different treatments uh, available um what we like to treat uh tmj the way we like to treat it is without surgery uh, right. and we'd like to treat it in its early phase okay um, uh, we make orthotics uh, that are appliances, dental appliances that are placed in the mouth that would help relocate those discs that are displaced and take the okay. uh, inflammation and um, the tension off of the muscles. And that allows all of the other problems uh, to start healing. Okay. Now, I know you're really big in preventive care in your office. So why don't you tell us about you know, some of the ways that you actually prevent problems and you know, why that's so important to you as a dentist? I think um, the old saying is uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, I think that's extremely uh, important to detect things early and we use a lot of um, new technology to um, be able to diagnose uh, these conditions before they become uh, long-term you know, side effects. Uh, for example, we we're talking about TMJ. If we can detect it early, it's a lot easier to fix it versus trying to deal with treating migraine headaches and uh, spinal problems and posture problems uh, right. over many years. Uh, same goes for gum disease. You know, if patients come in routinely for cleanings, you know, uh, we never have to do gum surgery. Um, right. So it's very important, and I think our staff uh, and I take um, um, our role as a preventative uh, care facility very important. It's, um, Okay, that's uh, great. Your focus. Okay, doctor, we're going to go ahead and take our first break right now, and we're going to hear from some testimonials. When we come back, we'll talk more about what we're talking about. Okay? Now, if you're looking for a dentist that can take care of your whole family and can handle almost every type of dental condition, then you need to call Dr. Tad Bozian's office and make an appointment to see him. Dr. Tad Bozian is an expert in the field of dentistry. When we come back from our first break, we'll continue to talk to Dr. Tad Bozian about the field of dentistry. We'll be right back. I've been seeing Dr. T for over six months and had an outstanding visit with him when he was able to diagnose me with TMJ, which is temporal mandibular joint dysfunction. I've been having symptoms for most of my life and uh, he was able to pinpoint where those were coming from in my jaw. And um, the procedures have been simple and painless and um, he's been really, really helpful. It was 13 years and I haven't been to the dentist and I came to Dr. T and he just made me feel so comfortable, so gentle, up front with me, um, no pain. And now I actually look forward to coming to the dentist and I've been coming ever since. Welcome back to today's health. Here's your host, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Hi, welcome back. You're watching Today's Health. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins. We have with us today Dr. Steve Tadbazian. We're talking about dentistry and everything you ever want to know about dentistry. So, Dr., as we're into our first break, we had our first Today's Health trivia question, which was, are sealants just good for preventing cavities in children? I'm glad you asked me that, Jeff. Um, that's a great misconception. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, uh, sealants are only for children. But you know, adults get cavities just as often as children do. So we're able to uh, seal the biting surfaces of the teeth. And as long as we do that, 
they'll never get a cavity. Okay. Um, well, that's an amazing thing because, you know, up until recently, I thought that too was only for children. And I was, even for that, though, I was blown away that you can do something that simple, just put the, you know, the sealant on the children's teeth, they never get cavities. Because I know growing up, I must have had 12 cavities in my teeth before I was 10 years old. You know, and if I would have known that that would have been something that could have been done, that's amazing. So I think parents really need to be aware of that. It's such an awesome thing. Well, yes, and also with the advances in dentistry, well, coupled the sealants coupled with fluoride treatments and regular dental visits, um, we're able to reduce about 75% of cavities nowadays. Okay. So I think it's a uh, great uh, benefit that you know the parents can give their children nowadays, to, so they don't have to have large fillings put in their teeth, root canals. Uh, the pain that's associated with you know dental decay and unneeded expense. Okay. Now, in light of what you just talked about, is there any other things you can do as far as preventatively for uh, children to detect things early? Yes, actually, um, when kids you know come to our practice, uh, we do a comprehensive exam. Uh, we look at more than just their teeth and gums, uh, and okay. pr protecting those definitely is is our uh, main focus. But we also look at their airways. Uh, we look at um, their swallowing pattern. If they have a aberrant tongue thrusting, okay. that can cause you know, the butt, dental bite to be off. Uh, right. Some kids have an open bite in the front. Um, some kids thump, you know, suck their thumb. Uh, and what we do, we have new appliances that can actually treat these problems before they become uh, a major issue in the child's self-esteem and appearance. Uh, and uh, we can decrease the time of orthodontics uh, that's necessary. And uh, going back to the airway question, uh, you know, a lot of kids uh, grind their teeth and um, they sometimes they snore, they don't sleep real well, and this can affect their um, focus. And a new study has shown that um, attention deficit disorders mm -hmm. and hyperactivity is 50% is, uh, of these children have a sleeping problem or an obstructive uh, sleep pattern and we can treat that you know early on while they're developing that's great because i know there's you know kind of a fear for a lot of kids especially as, as children you know to go to a dentist so if they can go in a more preventative aspect where there's not anything invasive done that's going to probably eliminate a lot of the fear so segueing into that next one so what are some other things you can do you know for people that are apprehensive about going to a dentist how do you handle that well uh, i would say if you ask my staff uh, they would say uh, 80% of our patients are moderate to um, uh, severe uh, apprehensive patients because they've had okay. unfavorable, you know, experiences in the past at their dental office. Okay. Um, you know, the the King House is an inviting environment. Uh, it's a home. They're sitting in a waiting room. There's a fireplace. We have an art gallery upstairs, and there's artwork all around the office by 28 different artists uh, from the local community. Okay. So uh, I think that helps them get into the mood uh, that they're home okay. instead of a cold environment. We have um, warm pillows that our staff give the patients. Uh, they can listen to music. Uh, we have a virtual reality glasses that they can watch a movie, you know, right, oh, right on their it. glasses while they're getting their dental work done. And it's a great distraction. Uh, we also provide nitrous oxide, which is a okay. like laughing gas. I'm sure right. people have heard of that. Right. Um, and uh, I've never got a complaint from anyone who got laughing <laughs> gas. And it's very safe. Um, and it removes all of the fear uh, so that we can get the dentistry that they so uh, need and deserve uh, without their apprehension. Right. And if needed, we can put them to sleep uh, you know, with an anesthesiologist. So. Um, there are a lot of new techniques uh, also that help us achieve 100% numbness. Where, uh, one of the complaints I, uh, I get is patients say, the dentist you know, couldn't get me 100% numb, I felt it while they were drilling, and right. you know, this new technology allows us to get 100% anesthesia. That's great. So um, there are many new techniques that we have available now that uh, we can cater to patients who have some more um, uh, sensitive needs. That's great. So it's true pain-free dentistry then, really in your office. And okay, let's talk about nutrition. Why is nutrition so important you know, for healthy teeth? I know that's something that's big in your office as well. Well, I think nutrition is important for not only the teeth, but the entire body, Jeff. Um, uh, scientists and doctors like us have, you know, uh, recently uh, attributed a lot of our um, health problems to 
uh, nutritional deficiencies. Uh, you know, our New Age society is eating such a poor diet. We're eating fast food, we're eating processed foods, um, and we're not getting uh, the nutrition um, that can help uh, avoid some of the common health problems like obesity, um, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, uh, and diabetes. And uh, I believe, and I think my staff is, is a big proponent of this, and where we can counsel patients on their nutrition right. um, and show them ways that they can uh, have better oral and overall health. Right. Now let's go into a teeth whitening. I know that's a really big hot button now with you know, some of the extreme makeovers. Everybody wants white teeth. So how do you handle teeth whitening in your office? Um, I can remember, you know, about four or five years ago, you know, tooth whitening was just uh, becoming a novelty where we used to uh, make trays and patients had to wear these overnight for two, right. three weeks and they drooled all night and <laughs> yeah. they woke up and their teeth were sensitive. So there wasn't a really good compliance and a good result with that. Um, now patients will walk into our office in, in about an hour to hour and a half. They're watching a movie. Uh, we put some gel on their teeth. Uh, we put a, a, a high frequency light and they walk out with a beautiful sparkling white smile. And um, there's no drooling, no wearing <laughs> trays. And you know, it's a very effective and, and, and efficient way uh, to get a beautiful white smile. And I love to see the patient smile after. That's great. So tell us about your staff. I know you're really proud about your staff. So tell us about them. Um, I have a wonderful, caring, and compassionate staff. Um, some of them have been with the King House for over uh, nine years, um, and they have a lot of experience, uh, especially with all of the new diagnostic technology that we're using. Uh, we're, we're somewhere in the country every other Friday or Saturday getting trained on all this new uh, equipment. and. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to say uh, thank you to my staff because um, uh, I'm a very happy dentist. I couldn't be any happier um, uh, with, with any other staff because they give me their uh, unending commitment. Uh, and that shows uh, in our big family of patients and to the community. Yeah, and that's one of the things that is going to make it easier for patients to come into, too. They feel like they're coming into a family environment, so that's great. Okay, Doc, we have to take our next break right now. Now, if you're looking for a dentist that can take care of your whole family and can handle almost every type of dental condition, then you need to call Dr. Tate Vazian's office and make an appointment to see him. Dr. Tate Vazian is an expert in the field of dentistry. When we come back from our second break, we'll continue to talk to Dr. Tate Vazian about the field of dentistry. We'll be right back. My teeth were actually too narrow for my mouth, so I had to wear braces for about four or five years, and my teeth did not have shoulders on them. So they were too narrow for my mouth, so there were still gaps left after the braces had come off. Uh, Dr. T approached me with the idea of porcelain veneers and told me about them. And ever since I've gotten them from Dr. T, uh, my confidence level has gotten up. I've advanced myself uh, in my business career and my, my school career, and it's uh, just changed my life. The, the treatment has really changed my life. I never thought I'd say a dentist could save my life, but coming from the pain and the problems I was having, um, I feel like a new person. Welcome back to today's health. Here's your host, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Hi, welcome back. You're watching Today's Health. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins. We have with us today Dr. Steve Tate Bazian. We're talking all about dentistry. Now, doctor, as we went to our second break, we had the next Today's Health trivia question, which was, uh, can sleep apnea and snoring be treated by a dentist? Definitely, Jeff, they can. Um, uh, as dentists, we're looking in the mouth more often than any other medical professional. So uh, dentists are, are more likely to detect airway problems and uh, obstructive sleep apnea or snoring problems than, uh, than most other doctors. And we see our patients usually okay. a couple of times a year. Um, let me explain what sleep apnea is. Okay, um, sleep medicine or sleep dentistry is relatively a very new field. Uh, obstructive sleep apnea is when somebody stops breathing or awakens in the middle of the night. And usually it's because of a uh, collapse in the tissues in inside the uh, oropharynx, okay. uh, down the throat. And uh, a lot of bed partners would um, you know, rate this as uh, snoring or a gasping or trying to breathe deeply when okay. patients are tossing around all night. 
and they're just not getting the amount of oxygen that they require. Uh, so that's what sleep apnea is. Um, and patients um, will have symptoms such as uh, waking up with headaches. Okay. Um, they'll be tired. You know, they, they slept eight hours, but they feel they didn't get enough good deep sleep okay. uh, because they keep waking up. Um, right. And a lot of times they won't be aware of that. They feel tired in the afternoons. They fall asleep behind the wheel. Um, and what, one of the new research shows that uh, this can cause a lot of cardiovascular uh, problems uh, sure. okay. because the heart is start stopping and starting every time we stop breathing. Right. Uh, and one of the studies I just read said that it takes uh, it can take eight years off your lifespan. Right. So it's a serious problem uh, that should be treated early. And as a dentist, we can detect this. Uh, and that goes back to the prevention again. We do screen for this in our office on a regular basis. Okay, that's great. Now let's talk about. Uh, some of the smile makeovers that you do in your office. I know that's got to be one of the most rewarding things for you, you know, kind of talking about teeth whitening like we did earlier. Let's talk about some of the smile makeovers you do. Um, it's one of the most uh, rewarding things that I'm doing. I've been doing uh, smile makeovers since 1997. I'm sure we've all been exposed to the shows uh, that have been on recently right. about changing one's smile and their um, overall appearance. And um, when a patient comes in requesting you know, a cosmetic you know, a consultation, we talk about many options, orthodontics, uh, porcelain laminate veneers, or porcelain veneers, and I'd like to talk more about what veneers are. Sure. Um, they're coverings that go over the front of the teeth, and yeah. with the technology we have available now, uh, we use intraoral cameras to show patients their smile, right. and we can actually change the color, the shape, the width and height of their teeth and give them a completely new smile. Um, so uh, patients you know, will come in two to three visits and they leave with a brand new smile. And it's a, it's a great joy for the staff and myself to see someone um, looking at themselves and smiling when we're done and really elevates their self-esteem and their confidence level. So it's one of the most fun things I can do. Yeah, it's gotta be exciting to do that, seeing those before and afters. Now, how does your office uh, get involved in the community? I know that's another big thing that you're really, I uh, think, is a focus in your office. So explain that to us. Right. Uh, we love to get involved in the community. Um, we especially like working with children because that keeps us going, you know, if we can give, ba give back to them. Right. Um, one of the things we've done is we got uh, the local artists together because there's, there's a big art community in Redlands. And uh, we had a fundraiser where the artists uh, donated the proceeds of their work um, uh, to the Boys and Girls Club and other charities. So uh, it was nice to have uh, a lot of organizations involved. Um, one of the things that we're doing currently, I'd like to tell people about, is a Do a Good Deed contest. And um, um, you know, I think our, uh, the children of this generation is just as good as the generations in the past. And you know, sometimes we get, uh, they get criticized for doing negative things, and I think uh, they're not getting enough praise for doing, you know, uh, the good things that they're doing. So this is an essay contest where uh, children will write in of the good deed that they did, and we uh, give an award of a computer system. Right. Uh, and we're just basically trying to encourage uh, good deeds and uh, give them uh, technology and our ability to advance in uh, today's uh, busy world. That's great. Now, just quickly for people who might not have seen the beginning of the show, just tell us again just some of the major symptoms that can be caused by the TMJ problem. So, as I know it's such a big thing, and you definitely specialize in that. So, just quickly give us again a few of the symptoms that can be caused by TMJ. Um, some of the m most common things, again, are just popping and clicking noises in the jaw. A lot of people don't associate the other. Uh, body-wide problems that can happen, such as headaches, neck and back pain, uh, difficulty sleeping, muscle tension, uh, ear aches, ringing in the ears because of the vicinity of the nerves, okay. um, sometimes uh, dizziness or feeling faint or a, a balance, uh, imbalance issue. Uh, and a lot of these things can be corrected by going to your dentist. Okay. And uh, the dentist may have uh, training uh, in, in treating the TMJ that patients may not be aware of. That's important. So I really want to encourage people that are watching, if they are suffering some of those things, it could be as simple as you going, them coming in to see you and you handling the TMJ problem. So Doctor, we're running out of time, so why don't you tell us what is the one thing you want to leave people with that are watching the show tonight? 
Jeff, uh, I want to stress that I think prevention is more important than treating the disease. Um, and patients should see their dentist on a regular basis because they can avoid um, having to treat problems once they've um, manifested. Right. And the dentist may have training in many areas like we spoke about, sleep apnea or TMJ. And um, I want everyone uh, to get out there and see their dentist today. Right. Well, I'm going to encourage them to come in and see you. Not only a dentist, but Megan, that's one of the reasons I asked you to be on the show is I really do think you're the expert in your area and you do a whole host of things in your office, you know, with a great reputation. So you know, I encourage people to come in and see you to see if they can have some of these things done on a preventive basis because that's one of the big things I know in my family. Doing it preventatively saves you time, saves you pain because nobody wants to have anything invasive done. So the preventative aspect is huge. So, Doctor, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. Will you come back again and uh, speak with us again in the future? Definitely. Thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. It. Okay, now I encourage everyone who is watching tonight to call Dr. Tatevazian's office and make an appointment for a checkup. If you're looking for a dentist that can take care of your whole family and can handle almost every type of dental condition, then you need to call Dr. Tatevazian's office. Dr. Tatevazian is an expert in the field of dentistry. It is possible to have dental problems and not know it. Do it now before it's too late. I want to thank you for watching this edition of Today's Health. Have a great day. You can walk around the streets and say hello to everyone, you know, in the morning while they're getting their coffee. Right. Um, I really enjoyed that little quaint you know, surroundings. They have a lot of uh, historic landmarks, a lot of mansions, and I was always uh, fascinated by these you know, uh, old buildings. Right. Um, and you know, uh, I happened to walk into uh, the King House Dental Group, which is the, the practice that I'm in, and okay. uh, it's a 103-year-old um, building. Wow. And uh, I just fell in love uh, with the architecture and. Um, decided that's where I wanted to practice dentistry. That's great. I know you brought a clip that kind of shows. Welcome to this edition of Today's Health. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Today we're going to be discussing dentistry with one of California's leading experts. We'll be covering teeth whitening, smile makeovers, TMJ pain, sealants, preventive care, and much more. You're really going to love this show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome to Today's Health. Today's Health is informative and exciting. Today's Health interviews leading experts in all areas of healthcare, so you become a much more informed consumer. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jeff Hawkins. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jeff Hawkins, and you're watching Today's Health. I'm very fortunate to have with me today a true expert in the field of dentistry, Dr. Steve Tadvazian. Dr. Tadvazian graduated in 1996 from Loma Linda University, one of the best colleges in the country, and is a board-certified doctor of dental surgery. Dr. Tadabozian has been practicing in Redlands for eight years. He's here today to talk about all aspects of dentistry. Dr. Tadabozian, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. So first of all, why don't you tell us why you decided to set up your practice in the Redlands area? Well, from my first visit uh, to Redlands while I was in dental school in Loma Linda, I fell in love with the com community. Um, uh -huh. The people were very friendly. There was the office. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at that so people can see what this office is like. It's really unique. Go ahead and show the clip. I first started coming here probably four or five years ago. At first when I saw the uh, King House, I just thought it was a quaint little house. And then once I had come in and saw what the office was like and the modernization of it. And it's a very, very casual, home-like place. You come in and it's not your typical, your typical dentist office or, or orthodontist office. It's not real serious. It's a laid-back environment. Uh, there's art for you to look at. Everyone's very friendly. It's just a, it's a real cool place. That's great, Doc. That's a really neat office, very unique. So I'm sure that's one of the reasons why, like you said, that you would go there. It's just a real quaint office. I mean, it's neat to have the upstairs and downstairs. So why don't you tell us, first of all, why you decided to become a dentist as well? Well, I think um, when I was a child, uh, I would smile a lot. And everybody you know, nicknamed, nicknamed me Smiley. And uh -huh. uh, I was fascinated with people's smiles and teeth. And uh, one day my uncle um, said, you know, why don't you sit down and plan your future and write me a letter? Uh, and I think I sat down and wrote down when I grew up, I wanted to become a dentist. Uh, okay. I forgot about this.